Commentary on Hugh Cook's Chronicles of an Age of Darkness 5. Okay, the next section, the uh, standard paperback edition from Corgi, page 12. Okay, the next section. Name, Myfon. Birthplace, Driftwood Islands. Occupation, Wizard. Status, Minor Wizard of the Order of Nin, with limited powers to hear and control the minds of wild things. Description: Slender man of youthful appearance, with green eyes and a ready smile, dressed in woolen underclothes, waterproof leather outers, well-greased boots, and a broad-brimmed feathered hat. Residence: Lives as a travelling healer with no fixed abode. Okay. You know, um. He's a youngster who's the companion with a oh, five four the youngster and the other slovenly apprentice Garash. So it's five four, Garash the slovenly apprentice, and my fawn the youngster, but less than a century to his credit. So he wasn't hundred years old yet. Now he was also a wizard, quite obviously. But he's minor, because he, he's not a major wizard, he's only young, and he hasn't earned his status yet. He's got to keep on going in the wizarding world to earn his status. His ability is to hear and control the mi minds of wild things. It's interesting, I, I would note there that it doesn't actually say wild animals. It says wild things. So it's probably mostly meaning wild animals, but um, I'm not sure what would have been on Hugh's mind when he was composing that. Wild things could potentially, for example, include wild human beings, potentially. But he probably had in mind wild animals, but he might have said that if he meant that. Who really knows? So maybe just wild things in general, which can include things which are sort of forces of nature, potentially. Don't really know. Maybe uh, to hear and control the minds of wild things. So it's minds. So it's um, minds of wild things hear and control them. So it's not inanimate objects or inanimate things, but uh, hear and control the minds of wild things. So you must have so, the order of Nin. I guess the order, that, the order of Nin might have that as a preoccupation within its order. Maybe uh, one of the, the orders of the wizards potentially have different specialties in their, their uh, work. Of course, Pfeiffer is of the order of Arl, with powers of a light and fire, and it says that. So maybe the order of Arl concentrates on light and fire, and the order of Nin concentrates on controlling the minds of wild things, to hear and control them. So it could be something of the idea that um, things which are sort of brutish and less intellectually developed are more susceptible to being controlled and coerced according to the will of the wizard because they uh, don't have as much independent thought and thinking and just use base instinct and uh, perhaps they're easier to control because they're not, they're not as aware that they're being controlled and couldn't care less quite as much. Maybe that's what's going on in the, uh, the power of the Order of Nin with their subsidies of magic. Okay. Now he lives as a travelling healer with no fixed abode. Wherever I roam, there I lay my head is home, as Metallica scene. Travelling healer, with no fixed abode. So he goes uh, uh, from town to town, I guess, healing the people, and uh, I assume he probably earns, earns his crust doing that. That's what it's about, being a healer. So um, because he's a, a healer, it's interesting that he's agreed to go on a mission to kill this fellow that they're going off to kill. It's his name Heenmore. So it's interesting that a healer's going off to kill. So, you know, he's, he's rocked up to, well, let's say, Andrew Marf Marfos, and he's, he's just killed Heenmore. I'll heal you. Didn't you just kill that bloke? I'm not sure, sure about that. But, um, so, you know, <laughs> you go to your doctor, he's, hey, uh, I only killed four people in my youth, don't worry about it. <laughs> Dr. Dev says, you can trust me, you know. <laughs> That's where we're up to. He's, um, 
and he's a healer and he's itinerant and uh, that could be a hard life for him in, in Argon especially not being able to be able to fix the boat he'd have to work hard to get his crust you know what I mean without, without a permanently fixed place of residence you know you're gonna have to work hard to get your money and if it's not coming in then probably he's might be eating wild berries and things like that some of the time but I guess that's the lifestyle that he likes on the road, going around doing this and doing this, doing that. So that seems to be vaguely the concepts of my from that we've learned so far. I guess, I think it said he's slender. It said he's slender, didn't it? Slender man of youthful appearance. So one of the reasons he might be slender is that uh, he's always, always exercising because he's probably always walking everywhere because he travels around. So I guess that's a lesson for the people of Adan and uh, Olo Milan. But if you keep on traveling and you're, you're no fixed address and you're a nomadic sort of walker lifestyle thing, then obviously you're probably going to stay fit. And that's what my fun looks like it probably is. With all the traveling that he does all the time, he's probably a fit enough wizard. And in that sense, he's probably a good enough choice for this, uh, this commission that the Confederation set of knocking off um, Heenmore, who stole the goods, the, the, the artifact from the dry pit in the Forbidden Zone. 